Thanks a lot, uh, Andrea, for this very kind uh, introduction, uh, also uh, making me feel even more responsible for what we do uh, in the future. So uh, I've listened to a great part of your discussions today and yesterday, and indeed this was incredibly rich. So it was a really impressive amount of innovation already happening all over the EU. And I think it shows that uh, many of you as farmers and foresters and uh, helping um, the land managers uh, in this area really are already contributing on a day-to-day -day basis to reach our climate goals and to our commitments. Indeed, uh, I heard uh, one of the testimonies, I think there is no reason to feel guilty. On the contrary, there is a lot of reasons to, to feel really proud uh, of what we already have there. And uh, we listened very carefully to the many success stories. So, so this is really important for us also, let's say at the more bureaucratic uh, level working day to day uh, in the context of designing uh, research or legislation and so on. It's important to hear that uh, and, and, and take that forward to make sure we do the right designing. I don't believe it's too late for the common agricultural policy, by the way, but OK, let's see. So these uh, impressive um, examples that we have from the organic certified vineyard in in spain using zero external inputs uh, also the crop farm in estonia testing various innovations in collaboration with researchers so here we go um, that was really showed us that uh, uh, you work really hard already in getting your uh, innovations applied on the field and on the forest, but also share it with others. So we heard about concrete farming practice. So yesterday I was impressed by all these examples, no tillage, drilling, uh, cover crops, uh, which cover crops, catch crops would be most adapted and so on that can help agriculture become more climate neutral. That some of you already make use of the possibility that uh, the digital technologies can provide. This is something where, uh, it's again very often there is the perception that uh, farming is not uh, uh, the, the first uh, area that comes in mind but on the contrary I believe that in the area that we work uh, we can make uh, most progress actually by using and further extending those technologies in the future and also it was good to hear that many of you are already collaborating with other actors to develop and test your, your innovations so that's great but now now, what have we heard about the challenges and obstacles? And this is really what we also, as policymakers, research makers, and legislation makers, have to take home and work further on. So you have identified that you need clear recommendations on management practices, methods, and techniques that work in your specific areas. And also, I suppose, the advice that goes with that. So uh, how to increase soil fertility, how to use cover crops, and so on more efficiently. You miss the opportunity to exchange your knowledge and experience with other farmers and other actors. So more connections also between different actors. So that's something that we can directly cater for at European level, but also at local and member state level that need to be enforced. Then measurement. Uh, so again, we've heard it from, from, from John and reporting have come across as key aspects to address. And that's also interesting because as we had our workshop here, at the global level, there was the annual gathering of the Global Research Alliance uh, on climate. Uh, so, and DG Agri has recently become party uh, of that. And there it was interesting to hear what they do. By the way, they also develop uh, syllabi and uh, calculation methods that can be further used. But it's true that that's an area which is key and where we have to see. I heard the plea for funding for this. Uh, so in this regard, the commission is working on improving monitoring tools for land-based removals. Uh, so we, we really have to see how we take that forward. Um, then there was the ensuring farm profitability against good carbon ma management. That's really key. 
we've seen some of your examples, uh, but I think it's really uh, key to see uh, if we look at the importance of looking at carbon issues in farming with a holistic perspective. So uh, what do we need and uh, what are the new business models and how can we ensure that farmers with all these challenges still make a living while looking uh, after uh, climate and environment and providing uh, ecosystem services, as many of you do and have told us. You have emphasized the need for policies and the market support, market to support beneficial farming systems, and also the importance of education. I think this is like really a key issue. When we work now, for instance, on the mission for soil health, uh, this is also soil literacy in schools, uh, out there, in gardens, in whatever, even citizens literacy. Yeah? So same thing is for carbon and carbon uh, uh, farming. I think we really have to do more on that. And there we also have a role to play at the European level to, to, to improve these things. So what you really have highlighted is the need to address local challenges with local solutions and bringing farmers, researchers and actors together, co-constructing these solutions. And this is really good that at the moment we're negotiating uh, the support for that and a better support uh, under the cap. And I think we're making advantages, uh, advances there. And let me say that the needs you have identified and the possible ways to address those all resonate well with our vision for the new RNI program Horizon Europe. So we take home uh, to the drawing board those ideas that you have come up with. And also my colleagues that uh, work on the soil mission and on the agroecology living labs partnership will take due account of that and make sure that we can build this already in from the start, many things that you have done. So I think it will be productive uh, from everybody's side. Um, so, but it is clear that all these challenges cannot be addressed with only one tool. No? So advisory service, we have to reinforce, we're working on it. The IP Agri uh, will in the future be reinforced. We have uh, tried to get away with some of the bureaucratic obstacles that we have for the operational groups. Uh, there will be a lot in the new period coming on to make hopefully the work that many of you do also making the work you do together with the researchers. Uh, easier on the ground, uh, for instance, with advance advances we can pay. So many concrete things that you really know. So, and we also are happy that now for the cup we have the cross-cutting objective on knowledge exchange and innovation, which will also mean that there will be a stronger emphasis in orienting the future CUP strategic plans. So I hope um, that I have made clear that my ears were very open and not only mine, but also those of the colleagues to take this home and effectively build it in. Uh, we will stay in contact with many of you because there are things to follow up, uh, so uh, which is clear and we want to work further on this and we will bring this to even more use that we already had today. So we had pioneer farmers, uh, researchers, advisors, all of us coming and sitting around on a virtual table today. Incredible. If somebody would have told us that two years ago that we can do this so well, I don't think that anybody would have believed it. So the context is not ideal, but we made the best of it. So I want to thank all of you, the moderators, uh, so Andre and Anna, but also all of you, because you've moderated parts of this. Also the service point uh, for making all of this possible to get together. And we look very much forward. We have enjoyed this very much and we will see you soon, virtually or hopefully physically, some of you also on the fields and out in the forest. So thanks a lot for this. And this is the formal closing.